What is going on everyone? Today, I am going to be making an advanced soul eater guide for you all. My Arcanist advanced guide got so much positive feedback that I just couldn't say no to making a soul eater one. Now I'm sure you all have absolutely no problem cruel fighter MVPing with this class, but I wanted to make sure people knew how to utilize soul eaters kit to maximize their DPS significantly. Before we begin, if you want to see more advanced guides, make sure to like and subscribe to this video and I'll make it happen. Now number one, this is an easy one to start off, casting guillotine before you go into deathlord mode, which is your Z skill. Now why is this good? While not benefiting from the deathlord damage, you do benefit from the crit rate. Uh, therefore, if you don't have guillotine up for deathlord, it's okay. Just continue as normal. Waiting for guillotine to come back anything past 2 seconds is honestly a waste of time. I'd rather just continue to stack again. Number 2. Be sure to always have your lunatic edge on cooldown. Too many times I see players and especially some big streamers that, that play soul eater and not use it correctly. That is a DPS loss for Raid Captain, because it gives you movement speed, and the 6% synergy. Now, obviously, if you go into Deathlord mode, you can see that you do get the 6% synergy regardless. So it's more for the movement speed here, right? We're all using Raid Captain, so let's use Lunatic's Edge right before we do our burst. The cooldown of Lunatic Edge and the synergy cooldown are identical at 10 seconds. For the movement speed, it's actually at 8 seconds. So there's no wiggle room. Now the world isn't going to end if you didn't use Lunatic Edge immediately when it's up, but just make sure you are benefiting from the damage boost for your pink skills at the very least. Number 3. For the most part, you can cast whatever skills you want, right? Anything that has Stygian skills to get your gauge. This is how you build your gauge get ready for the burst. So prioritize the big ones like Death Order, uh, Lunatic Edge, blah blah, right? We all know that. Now what am I really trying to get at here? Here's my third advice. Try to use Vestige, then Asteros in that order. I'm being really picky, but it's because those are your two biggest mobility skills. So what do you think will happen if you cast your Vestige? Yes. Now your character will be off in Zimbabwe, where maybe you won't be in range for some of your skills, especially Death Order. Death Order is a very low range skill. Or for example, you Vestige to the right, and the boss moves to the left. Now the gap between you and the boss is larger. Therefore, you should use Astros as a gap closer back to the boss. Now, I will show you guys all this in Trixian just as an, a demo. All right, so we're now in Trixian. This is my home, basically. I test a lot of things for many, many hours to see, you know, or to practice and to see what kind of things uh, do the most damage, right? So just in real raid practice, too. Uh, when you use your... So let's get some uh, stacks for your Vestige. When you... this Pretend this is the boss, and you move Vestige to the right, right? So now you're a decent size away from the boss. But you can still probably throw a death order here and whatnot. But you and then you can gap close like this, and then, and then use all your skills before you use vestige or sorry Astros, and then use all your rest of your skills. Correct. But sometimes you know you're in the heat of the moment. You're going like this, and then you go this, and you do this, and you're like this far away. Now this death order will not reach. I mean we could t we could test it. So where's it gonna reach? It doesn't even reach. So. This is my point where I say it's a gap closer. So when you use your Vestige, it's better to regroup back in with uh, Astros so that you are back in range to cast whatever skills you want. That's pretty much it. All right. Now we can move on to number four. You need to know which are your four push immunity skills. Yes, so well, this is full moon, by the way. Full Moon has four push immunity skills, not including space. The first one 
is your counter skill. So mine's on W. Called Gluttony. You even have a tripod that says Tenacity. On skill use grants push immunity. Don't forget this. This is extremely important because you can use this to your advantage. It's a low cooldown skill that you have push immunity on. That is just insane. But anyway, the second is your Reaper Scythe also has a tripod, tenacity. So now those are the two. And you're probably wondering, what are the last two? The third one is your Awakening. And your fourth one is your Death Board mode. Now we'll focus more on the Gluttony and the Reaper Scythe, but do know that you can use any of these for kind of attacks that really require you to push immune. But anyway, these skills, Gluttony and Reaper Scythe, are how you will be able to greed DPS. And it's not trolling at all, right? It's not, it's not greeting. Because okay, greeting can be a bad thing. This is not. For example, in Thay Mine Gate 3, there are a lot of patterns that can knock you down and push you off the edge. Knowing to push immune correctly will help you to save your space bar for more important dodges to do. Right? The more opportunities for you to save your space bar for any emergency situations, we'll take those, right? So any you'll see it in some of my gameplay that I've posted for Thay Mine and on the Soul Leader. I'll use my um Gluttony skill or my Reaper Scythe to dodge any of uh, Thaimine's attacks that kind of blow me away. That way I'm perfectly safe, right? Zeals always mentions, you know, tenacity, tenacity. Reaper, uh, not sorry, not Reaper. Uh, soul Eaters are really good for that. So make sure you take advantage of all those skills. All right. Now we should go to number five. Your Vestige should always be on cooldown. If you have two full stacks of Vestige, like here, you can see at the bottom right, it says two. You only have a maximum of two stacks. Once I use one stack, now we have one. If I use another stack, now we have zero. But you see it's going in cooldown even when I have used one stack, right? It has the cooldown indicator even though I have another stack available. If you have two full stacks of Vestige that isn't being used, you are delaying your Death Lord mode. It is important to use at least one so that the Vestige is always on cooldown. I see many people, for example, going like, okay, I'm building, I'm building, I'm building. You have this setup right now. You have Reaper, you have the opportunity to use Reaper Scythe, Vestige, and Guillotine. They use Guillotine and then they use Vestige. No. Use Vestige and then use Guillotine or whatever, right? Always prioritize using at least one Vestige. Now, if you have this kind of setup, then, sh then sure, you can use Guillotine if you want and then use your Vestige. Then that's fine. But if you have two stacks, make sure you're burning those two stacks. I cannot stress this enough because there's way too many people. No good. All right. So that was Full Moon, pretty quick, uh, but I hope it was very helpful. Do let me know in the comments for the Full Moon enjoyers what you guys think and maybe other advice that maybe I can learn or I forgot to teach. Let me know. All right, let's talk about Knight's Edge now. So let me go back out. Uh, and also for Knight's Edge, I'm going to be talking about 413, right? Meaning, that there's four gas skills, one Stygian skill, and three pink skills. This is the highest damage you can you can do on Night's Edge Soul Eater. So if you're not using it, what are you doing? Start pumping out that big damage by switching to 413. Okay, the so number one is my secret tech, and I can't believe the tech the tech is being released. Okay, what do you see here? Put a Judgment Rune on Harvest. This has saved me so many times from my Conviction Judgment not proccing from the usual Soul Drain into Lunatic Edge. Now, I mean, since it's a 40% chance and multiple hits, you're probably likely to hit it. So don't get me wrong, for the most part, you will hit it. But it's not 100%. 
I'm making it so that it is 100%. I'm shifting the gambling odds in my favor in this casino game, right? So the reason why I do this is if your con conviction judgment doesn't proc, your rotation becomes really wonky. To prevent that, a uh, judgment on harvest. It will always proc and I'll never have to worry about ever ruining my rotation ever again. And there's there's other things to worry about, right? Like managing your edge meter, right? Because it, it will slowly go down. Okay, number two. Similar to Arcanists who use Dominion Set, equip the Awakening Engraving before you use Awakening for Nightmare Set. So 413, you should be using Nightmare, of course, six piece Nightmare. But if you go to Engraving Support, you can put Knight's Edge Awakening, right? Make sure you have the engraving and then just, just fill it, fill it out. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. You're not going to use it. You're just going to toggle it, use your awakening. So I don't, I guess I can't use awakening here. Um, but in before the raid in the fountain, use your awakening and then untoggle. This way you save cooldown reduction on your awakening. This will allow you to use your awakening faster during the raid. Um, it just makes life so much easier. It, that's it. Low effort for the ability to use awakening more often in a raid. I'll take it. You know, that's worth. Number three. Do not use any pink skills pre-raid. I'm talking about the mobs you're supposed to kill before the boss. Why are you even hitting them anyway? Let the gauge builders build their gauge. You are griefing yourself by filling your gauge up even partially. Being in soul snatch mode is actually a DPS loss. So when you get into the raid, you're going to have to fight mobs first, right? So, I mean, sometimes you want to help, right? Then use your gas skills instead. All your gas skills and your Stygian skills. Don't use any of these skills. Now, there is... One way you can use pink skills at the very beginning. If you have no soul stones, using a pink skill doesn't give you that much edge meter, right? So it's going to go down enough so that, you know, you'll, you'll be fine. But for the most part, what I like to do is not even risk it because some people clear faster than others. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Like, I need to wait for my edge meter to go all the way down, right? So then I just use lethal spinning, harvest this and then rinse and repeat don't have any cooldowns oh well like let the spec soul leaders and the spec igniters so on and so forth get gauge okay number four use the six piece dominion set the thing over here right so normally use nightmare but use dominion set in guardian raids guardian raids are short enough that you won't need to worry about having awakening back up to refresh the dominion set right because there's a two is it two um minute cooldown let's see here yep two minutes so that's what the problem is is why we don't use dominion set in a real raid because it takes a long time so you won't have awakening back up to refresh and that's a massive dps loss. but in guardian raids they shouldn't be lasting you know two minutes and if, even if they are you have enough leeway to last longer than two minutes don't worry about that. But uh, just use the same awakening technique that I mentioned in, in the second advice, and you should be fine. You will do an absurd amount of damage, and your daily mental will thank you. I promise. Ch try it out. Six-piece Dominion. Use the awakening trick. Go into a Guardian raid. You're going to go, what the? Knight's Edge Soul Eater does this much damage? Yeah. It's pretty a lot. So there you go. That's number four. So we can finally conclude it with our final, fifth and final advice. Deathbringer or the end. Deathbringer, which is right over here, this one. This one gives you free three soul stones. Let's do these things. Soul stones. While the end just does more damage from the awakening itself. So which should you choose? Now, it's honestly personal opinion here that so I would recommend testing it out yourself. But in my opinion, the end is better. 
when I use Deathbringer, yes, I can get three soul stones after, but timing is the most important thing with Knight's Edge. Remember the edge meter? Any downtime will screw over your rotations and damage. So, you may not reach Soul Snatch mode in time for all your pink skills to be back off cooldown because of how the rotations come. So where am I going with this? Deathbringer is an incredibly long animation. The only benefit... I, I, can I show it? Let me, let me show it. Uh, let me pause and I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back in Trixian. So this is the Awakening. That's really long. And I'm not saying the end is not long, but we're using the Awakenings for different purposes, right? Deathbringer, we're using it to get the three soul stones. Awakening, uh, the, the end Awakening, we're using for more damage, right? So the only benefit is that you can use another enhanced pink skill, which does increase your DPS at that moment. It, you, get, you do get a free enhanced pink skill. However, you throw all your other skills out of sync, giving you a really rough time getting back in tempo. I instead use the end. And then what I do is, let me see if I can swap it out. So using the end, let me try to get into um, uh, soul snatch mode, which is the full gauge here. I could, I could honestly just, uh... Okay, so after I get into Soul Snatch mode, I use all my skills, and you see how everything is on cooldown? That's the time I use the end. Then I have all my time, and then I'm ready for a lethal spinning for the last one. Does that make sense? So I feel like because of that downtime, that is the perfect time to use the Awakening. But it's personal preference. If you use Deathbringer and do your full combo, and then there's a mech, then congratulations. You technically did more damage than if you brought the end. But it's such a specific scenario that I can't recommend that. I'd rather do this, right? I'll always be able to pop off the end after I use my first lethal spinning in full snatch mode. Uh, but let me know in the comments if I'm full of South Vern. We can talk about it. Anyways, that concludes the Soul Eater Advanced Guide for both Full Moon and Knight's Edge Soul Eater. If you all enjoyed this video or learned something, it would be nice to have you as a subscriber of my channel. It helps me to know that these guides were helpful. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.